Your mind is limitless. The possibilities are endless. Awaken Your Mind Magic shows you how you can dream limitlessly and live your life on a new level. Kathleen speaks with ordinary people who are living extraordinary lives using the power of their mind. Abundance, prosperity and success. There are no limits to what you can dream. Join Susan Kathleen on a journey into your dreams, making a difference and living life on your own terms. This is Awaken Your Mind Magic. Hello and welcome everyone. My guest speaker today is Susie Hazelwood from New Zealand and also she lives in Australia part-time as well. She is a fierce anti-bullying and suicide advocate, skin scare specialist, TV presenter, founder at Susie H. Child Advocate Anti-Bullying Foundation. She's a CEO and founder of Susie H. Skin Nutrition online shop and brand ambassador at Feeling Fab. I met Susie almost two years ago in New Zealand where she was giving a motivational talk about anti-bullying. It resonated with me so much and when she was circulating in the audience after her stage appearance, We got to meet and instantly liked each other, and we've been friends ever since. Welcome, Susie. I'm so excited to have you here as my special guest on Awaken Your Mind Magic. Thank you so much, Susan. Um, uh, Look, just listening to you talk, I just remember thinking when I first met you, um, how at ease you put people make people feel and put people at and the minute I met you I just knew that we were meant to connect and uh, I'm so blessed to know you and thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank you Susie. Susie you know this is the thing I was saying to you before we started recording no meeting is by mistake and if you open your up your mind and your perspective Mm. you know that that person's in your life for a special reason and you are special. That's right. (laughs) <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Special needs, maybe. But, <laughs> no, I love to laugh at myself. I love to laugh at myself in amongst it all. You know, you have to. You know, we all yeah, have special but, needs, my darling, and that—that's yeah. the truth. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, and they're, and they're great. It's great to acknowledge it. Yeah, thank you. Though I love that. <laughs> so, so your story is a powerful one, and I warm yeah. to it as there are many things in my personal past that resonate with it. How did you awaken your mind magic and what got you to the positive woman that you are today? Wow. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, Yeah. You know, from from going along this journey um, at at that stage of my life where twice I tried to take my own life to just now embracing every single day, every breath I have, I have so much gratitude to still be alive. And it was a process, Susan. It didn't just happen overnight, you know. Um, it, I, I think the biggest thing that got me to where I am now was talking about it because I had been raised, of course, that, you know, suicide is not something uh, that you do, especially being raised quite staunch Catholic. And uh, it was a very taboo topic. So, therefore... And God bless my parents, uh, you know, raised me with great morals and values as well along the way. But, you know, I had so much shame. Not only did I have shame that I wanted to take my own life, I had the shame that I was actually being bullied by by women um, for being on TV, you know. And and so, you know, I internalised it as uh, I was, I believe what they called me, a freak. And um, I didn't belong here. I didn't want to be on this cruel planet. So going I think first and foremost, knowing that I needed help, acknowledging that, swallowing my pride and uh, going public when I did did a documentary, I think that was the turning point that I turned the corner of knowing I need to do more than just hide away, you know. Leading up to this, 
you became um, a TV presenter, but before that, you were a postie. You were a post lady. Yes, yes indeed. About, yeah, tell us more about that. Oh, honestly, the halcyon days of, uh, of being a postie of the age of 17, I uh, started my first postie gig at Hobsonville Air Force as the Hobsonville postie. Back in the day when you wore a crop top and shorts, you didn't have a helmet, you just rode the bike and delivered <laughs> the mail. It was amazing. And, um, and then continuing on to be a postie throughout having my four amazing children, taking time off, of course, with having kids. But um, I love that job. I actually wanted to be the oldest postie in New Zealand because it was just one of those jobs that you got paid to keep fit. You, you got to meet some amazing people on your run. I had some lovely elderly people that I'd actually take the mail into and they'd give me a cup of tea and a sandwich, you know. Those were the days, you know, and you'd, you'd start early and you'd finished early. Uh, so I actually loved that job, absolutely loved it, yeah. How were you discovered as a person to go and, and present yourself on a TV program and also uh, – be, um, well, uh, what would you say an advocate for a beauty product or, or things mm. like, can you, can sure. you, yeah, can you go further on that? Yeah, well, you know, of course I was out in all weathers and, um, you know, my dad, very dark skin, so I've got olive tones anyway, but I was aware that I was pushing 40 and still posting, loving it. And I needed to do a little bit more uh, to up the ante with my skin, even though I'd always loved skincare and used good skincare. Um, I decided I would try these collagen capsules that were being advertised on the Good Morning Show. And, um, you know, I really enjoyed the product. And they were looking for some testimonials. And, um, you know, I my kids sort of suggested I send mine in. And with a photo, and, and I did, and I did some testimonials, and then the existing presenter presenting the product was leaving, and they asked me, would I like to present the range on the Good Morning Show as the presenter, you know, the TV presenter, and I was like absolutely blown away. And what a challenge for me, because I'd had those palsy, and so one side of my face had had what looked like a stroke, and it, look, it had, it had come right, but in my eyes, I could still see that imbalance. And so I thought this would be a really good challenge for me to put my face out there and try and get over my insecurities, um, you know. And just I want to quickly touch on something, too, that really I haven't talked about. Charlotte Dawson actually got asked to present the range before me. This is real synchronicity here. Yeah. And um, she ended up not doing it. And I would end up doing the doing this. And of course we'll talk about Charlotte down the track, but again, no coincidences. Yeah. There never so are any coincidences. No. And no. I with meant to be. Absolutely. And, and when you start to be aware of that, and that's why, yeah. why I talk about awakening your mind magic, you become Love aware it. of all of these things that yeah. um, make you wake up and see. Yeah things in the quantum field is a very different way. I think we're indoctrinated from childhood into believing yeah. that things are, well, things are human. However, mm. our mm. mass what of, we can't see. Yeah, yeah, there's this mass of energy that we are all interconnected with. And yeah. that brings me into saying to you, and we were talking about suicide and how wickedly cruel many women have been mm. to you in your life. Mm. Um, mm. That bad chi, as the Orientals call it, all the bad energy was directed yeah. at you like an arrowhead, yeah. which consequently yes. got you yes. into the state of depression and anxiety you're in. Can you explain to the listeners how a person who's been cruel and vindictive can affect your health and what happened to your health because of it? Absolutely, Susan. I'm passionate about this because, um, you know, I was raised by um, my beautiful mother and, and my amazing dad that, you know, if you've got nothing nice to say, don't say it. And I think I was, I did have rose colored glasses on. I thought the world was beautiful. Even into my adult life, I was, you know, an, a mum with four amazing children, you know, wonderful partner, you know, husband, a great job as a postie. So to put myself out in the public eye, 
um, and to find out just how hated I would become for doing a four-minute infomercial on the Good Morning Show, I think it got to my core. I actually remember a turning point when I started to decline. But I tell you what, Susan, I didn't let anyone know. I carried on being bubbly Susie. I hid it very well. But inside I was dying. And I think what I realized now, it was like I'd been run over by a truck so many times the feeling of emotional pain from bullying from name calling and that whole sticks and stones and they break my bones I say names will break my heart because we were raised you know sticks and stones will break your bones and names will never hurt you it is so wrong on all forums because the emotional damage done from the scarring it runs deep and it's not far from the surface even to this day and I am no longer a victim you know I'm a survivor But I was a victim and I have no shame in saying that word that I was a victim because you have to acknowledge that you are to get out of that hole and get some help, you know, and I think that's the biggest thing. It's okay to say you're not okay. I hear you there. When you talk about this and we talk about the awakening and you awoke to understand the victim Mm. uh, scenario and the empowerment survivor scenario, Mm. And how you can actually change your life around from from this terribly adverse feeling, mm. of, it, it, yeah. and, and it comes in waves. It's it, first of all, it's sadness. You feel mm. you feel as if you've been punched like an old punch bag, and yeah. it then when people like you talk about sticks and stones and all the rest. Yeah, I'd rather be punched than be to have the, emo- <laughs> to, to, and have the emotional I'm not promoting violence <laughs> no <laughs> but but that's so it, it it is a punch it's a psychological yep. punch that really Without hits you doubt. now with these uh with covid-19 mm. we are all more and more online and we're more and more visual because this is how we're managing to get our word across yeah. so consequently yeah. as you say you were on tv it was even Mm. before COVID-19 and the cruelty of social media and how people can be. Mm. What do you recommend to people during this period of COVID-19 where we all are online? What do you recommend Mm. to other people out there with your experience behind you? Absolutely. And uh, look, without a doubt, every, everything is online. I mean, trolling, is, you know, hiding behind a computer, the anonymous bullying that's going on, even more heightened with COVID, with everyone being more online. And my suggestion is, you know, is to remove yourself from it. If it, you know, there's that whole thing about needing to have the last word or trying to change somebody to your way of thinking or... You know, there is a saying, you can't argue with a sick mind and you need to look after your own well-being. So if you're online a lot because of it and you're getting targeted, remove yourself. Have no shame in doing that. Don't think that you're quitting. Don't think that you're giving up. I think it's so important to know when to move, remove yourself. I carried on doing the TV when realistically I should have stopped. I didn't want them to win, but in the end it nearly came at the cost of my own life. So I think... If you get that check in with yourself mentality of just knowing when to remove yourself from something that is affecting you, give yourself permission. That's extremely good advice. I'd love you to also be able to share with people what they should do when they are in a situation like this. Are there facilities out there that can help them? Look, absolutely. Um, I have, uh, as you mentioned before, I have my own um, anti-bullying foundation and a very small, might I add, but just my way of putting myself out there to connect with people that are being bullied, have been bullied, uh, who are feeling alone in their pain. That's CCH Child Advocate Anti-Bullying Foundation, which is on, um, at this stage on Facebook. I do give out my um, private details to those that need to connect with me because when I was that low I wanted someone like me that I could soundboard with that didn't tell me I was going mad that didn't tell me um to harden the f up and get over it I just needed someone that got it and that's what I that's what I put myself out there um but there are many organizations out there to help with anybody in trouble in your area and um just look I would recommend anybody going through this to Google also help within their own community 
because we do have people on hand. And that's wonderful. We, what we do need to let the listeners understand as well is they are not going mad. They, they right. have a right to be, a, be right. extremely distressed that somebody has, yeah. a, has hurt them. Hurt them. And yes. whether they know that person or not. And you were talking to me earlier on about almost a pack attitude mm. of woman. Mm -hmm. And in, yeah. your, in your biography, I, I noticed that your husband is um, a musician and has a band. Yes. And that when yes. you were even out there dancing, what happened then? He used to have to stop playing in order to help you, didn't yeah. he? Yes, he did. Um, look, you know, and this is from the top of the North Island right down to the bottom of the South Island. Uh, Dean was Elwood in the Blues Brothers, a New Zealand Blues Brothers show. And I'd go along dressed in with that, you know, Blues Brother, Blues Sister hat on. And, um, and I'd be out there supporting my husband with his band and go to all the gigs. And, but because I was on TV and recognised, um, my goodness, the, the Covens of Witches, or as we say, the Banshees out there, uh, and sadly, you know, our age group, Susan, um, would come up and he not hesitate to tell me how ugly I was, how creepy, creepy, didn't need a mask for Halloween. So it wasn't just happening online, it was happening in real life. But Dean had to jump off stage on a few occasions to stop them from pushing me on the dance floor. He even had to have some woman removed because I, my girlfriend and I got threatened to have our faces bashed in because I was the pure as lady. Um, I had a woman threatening to blow my face up if she saw me in public. You know, I know that, look, I know that she's not going to carry a bomb around and blow my face up if she saw me, but the fact that someone hated me that much to want to do that was scary, Absolutely. which caused great anxiety. Of yeah. course it did. I, I'm, I, coming from the UK, I'm very aware mm. of acid attacks and how, ex wow. how yes. extreme that is, where people, oh my God. They, they open their front door and this yeah. wicked creature is there throwing acid into their face. Oh, so my I can, God. I can imagine mm -hmm. when you get told yeah. your, your, your face is going to get blown up, what you do, you <laughs> think, oh, my gosh, I can't go out my front door. Yeah, well, you know, that, yeah. Absolutely horrendous. And I believe that's just as much a criminal offence as stealing a car or yeah. beating a child or dog or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. not acceptable. And our modern day society seems to think it's okay. Mm. I think you're right, Susan. There's a fine line between uh, freedom of speech and bullying. And yes, we, look, the bullying word is getting thrown around a lot and used in the wrong context, admittedly. It is being overused. Um, to me, continuous bullying is when you are going out of your way to target or tear someone down on a regular basis and, um, you know, or, or saying something viciously venomous. But at the end of the day, and just touching on what you mentioned about a criminal offence, thank goodness in 2013, New Zealand did bring it out as a criminal offence with regards to online bullying. And, uh, gosh, I meant to double, I think it's a $50,000 fine and two years imprisonment. I'm not sure how they actually um, police that, but I do know it was brought out in 2013 in New Zealand. So, you know, accolades to New Zealand for making that uh, call. I ha hands together and big mm. clap to that because mm. that, should be, mm. that should be enforced worldwide. No. Yeah, yep, exactly. And, you know, that was what Charlotte's Law was all about too, making it a, a criminal offence in Australia. Um, so, I, yeah, we do need, people do know, need to know the consequences for their actions. Like, you know, my, my, um, I have a T-shirt. I say it everywhere I go, continuous bullying takes lives. Um, and if it doesn't take your life, it can damage your life, you know. Absolutely does, Susie. Does I mean, some of the lives. people I've actually... Um, interviewed on Awaken Your Mind Magic, um, mm. one amazing, highly gifted man was bullied yeah. for being gay all his life. And he yeah. wanted to kill himself on numerous oh. occasions. And that is yeah. gender discrimination as well. Oh, absolutely. On top of gender discrimination, Charlotte's Law should be in Yes, indeed. Absolutely, without a doubt. Um, without a doubt, Australia do need to uh, make that a criminal offence like we have and follow suit. 
with that. Um, I, I need to find out, touch base with what, what else is happening with that. I know it's, um, I think it's been shut down, but of course we, we continue to know that, um, you know, Charlotte, beautiful Charlotte Dawson took her own life because uh, of course she had depression, but she was also being trolled. Talk yeah. more about your lovely friend. Charlotte. Well, look, Charlotte is somebody who I always loved so much as a, an amazing supermodel. Um, she was born in New Zealand, and I we she, we weren't friends as such. We never met, but she we connected after my documentary because she actually left New Zealand because of bullying and um, female bullying. And look, she was an amazing supermodel. I was a postie, so we're at both ends of the sphere here, you know. And um, she, we connected because she resonated with my my documentary. And because I had, we also left New Zealand nine years ago because Dean knew and I knew that if I stayed here, I wouldn't be here. It had gotten that bad for me to even go out, um, the anxiety, but also just the targeting, the, the, the um, you know, uh, scrutiny. Um, all you know it was just it was horrible so we did connect and uh, she said Susie don't let the haters get you down you know when you when you look good and do well in New Zealand they want to tear you down and um, uh, you know I just loved that she was just such such, such a beautiful soul and sadly um, 2014 she took her own life and that, of course, led me on to do more with what I'm doing. It also spurred me to create my own skincare range because I wanted to do more with not just um, spreading the message uh, about bullying, but also anti-exploitation in the beauty industry as well. Yeah. Everything you do is commendable. I so Thank appreciate you, what you do, Susie, because Thank everything you, you speak about resonates with me so, so much yeah, to my heart, yeah. to my core, yeah. because I've experienced that. this. And mm. what people don't understand is what you look like on the outside yeah. is what you've been given. You can't, you can't take <laughs> it away. I change it. Have you a can, damn, you try yeah. and change it. Well, you yeah. do. I mean, with, with Suzy H's beauty products and cosmetics oh. and, and all of that. But oh. what, what, what people don't understand is that beautiful soul inside that is pure and good and doesn't need this incredible cruelty that is thrown at, at this certain personality. Susie, I look at you, and, and listeners, this is, all, this is all voice going on here. Have a damn good look at Susie. She is quite incredible. She's got a head of hair. I don't know where it all grew from. It's this massive, blonde, beautiful hair. And she's, she's a baby boomer. And she has a better body than the average 35-year-old. And I can oh tell you that God. now. And this is, this is, this is, <laughs> this is, this is a fact. When you look after yourself and you care for yourself, you are your own brand. And Susie mm. is her own brand. And yeah. consequently, because she's this amazing brand, oh, you so get, expensive. I call them yeah. a pack of hyenas, female hyenas. Yeah. They get yeah. the biggest, nastiest yeah. jaws on earth. And yes. they get there Same. and they go for you and you wonder why they do that. What mm. psychologically it is, is mm. they have their own f terrible self-image and they have mm. to reflect it out on somebody else so that they yeah. don't have to look at themselves. Is that, is that what you think, Susie, or am I? A hundred percent. Look, you, you speak exactly as, as, I, I, as I speak, Susan, when it comes to I understand that behind um, these bullies is total insecurity and lack of self-esteem and you know we're not no one's born bullies human beings aren't born bullies they, it's a learnt thing it's a learnt behavior and we've all in life you know we, we have lessons to learn if we choose to learn from them and I'm the first person um, I always check in with myself my own intentions in life because we're only human you know and um, I think the biggest the saddest thing is the jealousy out there it is it's, it's actually poison and they don't know that. And I actually just put one of my memes up today about jealousy, um, about it being, you know, one of the worst emotions because, you know, instead of wasting your time comparing with others, you could be working on yourself. 
And I think it's really important. And it's a female thing. It's, and it's not just females. I mean, men get that too, um, the competition and comparing. But it's so destructive. And I think uh, I realized as a, even as a young girl, I remember feeling uh, a little bit out of um, – I was glad I wasn't there in the in crowd. I, I love my own company and we've talked to this too and I'd spend a lot of time in the garden with the fairies and I felt safe there with just my own company and I think that kind of got me in good stead, which is why I call myself autonomous autoimmune because I'm still pretty, I'm very autonomous. I land on my own moon, you know. And I hear you yeah. there. <laughs> I do yeah. the same and oh, I also yeah. believe in fairies, so there you go. Yeah. So there you go, another <laughs> another synchronicity with us, you know, and uh, which is why... Yeah, I spend a lot of time in our enchanted forest just to escape, you know. It is a good place. Yeah. This leads yeah. me on to asking you about your quote. That you, yeah. darkness needs light. The world mm. is big enough for us all to shine. Yeah. Explain. Without, without a doubt. I think um, that people, and I talk about this a lot too, is that if you feel good about yourself and you're proud of yourself, but it doesn't mean you think you're better than anybody else. It just, we're kind of raised, especially in New Zealand, don't get too big for your boots. Um, you know, who does she think she is kind of thing, which is really sad. It's really created the tall poppy syndrome that we have here now. And I know it's a worldwide phenomenon, but I do believe New Zealand is, is such a small country that, you know, it gets, it's quite polarized, but the whole darkness needs light is, don't dull your shine for anybody because the world needs more light and we can all we can all shine. You know, we need more light out there. And just because someone's shining doesn't mean you can't shine. Do you know what I mean? And so that was what where that kind was born, that whole thought of like, yeah, it's good enough that. for us all. Yeah. And this is this is where where you say this and you can shine yourself. Yeah. A pure sisterhood. A good sisterhood help yeah. uplift each other, and you help each other yeah. shine. When there's somebody who's yeah. not shining and twinkling so bright, you get yeah. together and say, "Come on, sister, let's help you get to where you need to go." That's right. This yeah. is what I believe. The bullies, is, uh, online trolls, people like mm. that, should understand that the insecurity and whatever it is they're doing to somebody else is not helping them. And it's certainly not helping that person, like your beautiful friend Charlotte, who ended up you know, ending her life at yes. this time. Yes. She's now back in cosmic energy and, and I'm course. sure is one of your wonderful fairy guides as well. But Absolutely. I, I feel that. Even though, as I say, we never met. We never actually met. She yeah. kind of connected through it. We connected. Yeah. But, yeah, I agree. I think that, yeah. She's out there for sure. She's out there. And this is where I, I, I personally believe that – as. I, when you get together with a sisterhood, you mm. get together in strength. You don't pull each yeah. other apart like hyenas do over carrion. Yeah. And that's yeah. how I feel. Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you about your friend, Jack Hammond, who created a range at your request using yeah. trop tropical pepticides, tropical vitamins uh, and glycoids, et cetera, et cetera. Share uh, with us sure. about that. It's amazing. Sure. Well, oh, thank you so much. Look, look honestly, there's no way if you'd said to me um, – gosh, eight years ago, or yeah, that I would end up with my own skincare range, I would have just absolutely laughed because as much as I've been passionate about skincare my whole life, um, mentioning that I'd broken, well, did I say broken to my neighbor's house when I was four to borrow her skincare. Uh, <laughs> and I say borrow because I, you know, and, uh, but anyway, uh, when we moved to Australia, I um, got a job demonstrating Thin Lizzy outside pharmacies. Yeah, and uh, you know, I got asked, well, "Did I want to have a job in store as a cosmetician?" And uh, I jumped at the chance at Priceline Pharmacy in the Gold Coast uh, to have a full time job. I got the full time job offered to me, and working in pharmacy was uh, amazing. Skincare scientist Jack Hammond, and also Andrew Agru, and he was a pharmacist as well. And Jack was already making amazing. Uh, topical vitamins, topical peptides and glycolics. We call it medical grade skincare. And he was already making amazing products and um, I was passionate about it. And then after Charlotte left, uh, Dean and I were in Byron Bay and Dean goes, Susie, you really need to bring out your own range. That's my husband. Yeah. 
and 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 do more with that because you know and so I I we I can't find the video but Dean actually videoed me ringing Jack and saying hey Jack can you please I'd like to make a range and call it Susie H Skin Nutrition and the rest is history because both both of Andrew and Jack were pivotal in the beginning of Susie H and we were all an amazing team and Jack still does um uh, make the range for me now to this day and so um at the end of the day yeah it was all meant to be so this was in 2014 so um yeah it's amazing you have yeah. a Susie H 100% certified organic coconut oil yes what, I what do what happens with the pro- proceeds from that because you have shared that with me let the audience know. yeah Yes, indeed. So when I first created the range, I said to myself, when I get big, I'll give all proceeds of my, you know, here I was, big thinking, thinking big, um, a way to um, helping those in need in my neighborhood. And I said, no, I'm going to start right now. So from the beginning of uh, creating Susie H, and let me tell you, I, I had no money, so I had to borrow money to create the range, you know, to continue yeah. on with the range. And... Um, and so from the beginning of Suzy H to now, all proceeds of the coconut oil have gone to, uh, well, first of all, I started off with um, Beyond Blue, giving it to them and Lifeline. And now all proceeds goes to Feeling Fab, at, of which I'm ambassador for. And um, what, what Feeling Fab is, was founded by my beautiful friend, Elizabeth York. And um, it's about pampering women going through grief. So once a month, we do pamper days. And we pamper women going through grief. Yeah. That's amazing. So wonderful. And this all stems from the adversity of bullying yep. to the positivity of you yep. having this dream as a child with cosmetics where you broke into somebody's <laughs> house. And yep. there you are, Susie, living yep. the dream and this yep. amazing life and an advocate to people who are suppressed, bullied, yeah. sad. I honestly, fantastic. Thank you, Susie, yeah, for thank all you, that Susan. you do. Honestly, I, I have to say this a thousand times because one person can change the lives of so, so many amazing women, just like Mother Teresa, <laughs> except she hasn't oh, got gosh. as much, well, she didn't have as much hair as you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, on that note, I nearly became a Carmelite nun and they shaved their hair. So oh, wow. after seven years, I was going to be a nun. So, <laughs> but uh, I got pregnant, so. <laughs> well, that's a good thing to know. At least, uh, <laughs> at least you have got one of one baby that brought you back to where you meant to be with all of meant us. to be. In yeah, this side yeah. of the world, not not as in yeah. no hair. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know, I, I know. And I just just going quickly back to that pain thing, Susan, about yeah. suppressing it. Um, you know, before we we go, yeah. I just need to say that I, um, you know, emotional pain does trap in the body, creating physical pain. And in two thousand and sixteen, end of two thousand and sixteen, I woke up one day and I couldn't walk. Yeah, and here I had been a fit postie all my life, and my legs wouldn't work. And I got diagnosed with multiple autoimmune illnesses, um, one being ankylosing spondylitis, which I've learned to manage, but I'm, you know, um, because I walk all the time. But again, I know, I know that was the emotional pain trapped in my body. I might have been 90, um, you know, until I got it, but because I was born with the autoimmune gene, but it was the trapment of the pain that caused it. Yeah, without a doubt. I totally agree with you there. When I work with my clients, that's one of the mm. first things I look at is the mm. history and timeline therapy of what they've, they've encountered in yeah. their lives. So where yeah. you come from there, you suppress it. We as yeah. baby boomers are always told to suck it up, princess, and be quiet. Mm-hmm. And when you're holding it within yourself without speaking, this is when you become ill and i saw you when we when we all met at our mutual wonderful friend rob's um shop bro um yeah. talk oh gosh it was about two years ago yeah spoke, yeah um where you had um there were knee guards on your knees yes yes um it, indeed so um, like I had meniscus tears from the the bike, not so much the biking, but the jarring as a posting naturally. Mm. 
but it was more the fact that my legs and you know my the body pain the pain and um but I, w- I i managed that susan i'm not on uh chemo i was recommended to go on the immunosuppressants which mm-hmm. is a form of chemo i turned it down i said i will get through this my way so not knocking that i'm saying for some the immunosuppressants are uh, what they need to shut down their immune system because when you're autoimmune, your immune system's overactive. Um, and I'm doing it my way and I'm and I'm walking like sometimes 20,000 steps a day, which is amazing considering they they had me in a wheelchair, you know. So, power again, the, the power of the mind. Yeah, yeah totally. With, totally. Yeah. I'm curious. You have a Susie... H doll and it's beautiful like you in fact I love your doll more than Barbie <laughs> oh my gosh oh my god my doll oh my and my gorgeous son Jimmy and you know let me tell you my children um were late teens when I was at my worst and um and Jimmy probably the most affected out of everyone all of my kids were affected but Jimmy probably the most in that uh, he would go online trying to show me these women that they what they would look like these trolls because and saying mum you know they're not very nice women sort of thing anyway he lives in Sydney now God bless him doing great stuff in his own right amazing young man spreading love with his music and talents but he he made me a, a Susie H doll for my birthday. And oh my god, he even got the eyes right. He's he he he, he's, he created that whole face of my face, you know. And um, I have loved dolls my whole life. And during some of the Blue Brothers gigs, I would actually take my Barbie doll with me as a security in my bag. And when I was a little girl, I used to take this little doll to school, and she would be in my desk, and I would look at her, and I felt like I was not feeling good. And so I as an adult woman, took my Malibu Barbie out with me to the gigs um, as a security blanket. So I don't mind. You know, I love dolls. I really do. So to have my own doll, it was just, it's just blown me away. It really I'm, has. She's just amazing. I visualise a Susie H doll as something <laughs> that could be um, created uh, yeah. and used yeah. for people like you. Yeah who use that as a comforter. And um, that's right. I'm looking forward I, to I seeing love that too. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what you get yeah. to do with your Susie H doll. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. I, I know there's definitely more we want to do with it, especially with anti bullying, you know, a message beside the doll. Absolutely. And just pushing, yeah, sure. <laughs> what would you say to other people out there who are being bullied, Susie? Yeah. And look, honestly, I say please 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 don't suffer alone do not suffer in silence it is not normal to tear people down so if you're being torn down to the extent your self-esteem is so low that you don't feel like you belong please talk about it get some help find somebody you know I say that especially our young ones I mean as an adult that didn't want to live because of bullying I can't imagine what our youth are going through they're getting bullied at school they're coming home they're getting bullied at online and especially to parents, be present in your kids' lives. Find out who they're hanging out with online. Um, you know, because it is our young ones. I really do. Uh, I, for everyone, anyone being bullied, not just young ones, but definitely ask for help. You know, you do not need to suffer alone. You certainly yeah. don't, Susie. And that's wise advice. And Susie, thank yeah. you so much for sharing with all of us here your journey. Thank you. And your incredible strength. You are so strong. Thank you so much, Susan. I am so grateful to be not just part of this amazing podcast interview, but a friend of yours because, uh, again, um, you resonate so much love and light on a planet that needs it even more. So thank you so much. Thank you, Susie, and so do you. How do listeners contact you? And do you have anything that they may subscribe to or perhaps have on offer for them when sure. they contact you? Sure. Well, look, um, you know, the best way to get hold of me is uh, through uh, Facebook on Susie H, spelled S-U-Z-Y-H, um, Child Advocate Anti-Bullying Foundation, or 
contact me via my email, and I'll spell it to you because it's an unusual spelling, S-U-Z-Y-H-E-A-Z-L-E, W-O-O-D at gmail.com, all small case. So please, please contact me if you feel you want to share your story to me or you just want somebody to talk to that gets it because that's my biggest passion. Thank you, Susie. And I will make sure that your contact details are in the write-up when this wonderful podcast is launched. And you do have other URLs, which I will actually put there as well. So yes, please. Once again, thanks so much for joining me here on Awaken Your Mind Magic and telling your heartfelt story, which I know, Susie, will encourage other people out there who are being bullied not to give up or in yeah. to this terrible form of mental and even sometimes yeah. physical abuse, like being pushed around yeah. on a dance floor. Yeah. yeah. You're such a brave and inspirational woman. And you are beautiful, Susie, inside and out. Thank you, Susan. I'm back at you, 100%. Thanks, Susie. You are Thank you. Thanks so glorious. Much, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> we have the mutual admiration. Oh, we do. Here. I we tell you it. what. Woo, woo. About Let's women see. celebrating women. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that song, you know, sisters are doing it for themselves. Doing it for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Susie, and I'll speak to you again very, very, very soon. That's Awaken Your Mind Magic for another week. If anything you've heard today has really impacted you and you want to know more or you would just like to connect with me, then visit my website, awakenyourmindmagic.com and reach out for a free one-on-one -on -one discovery session with me. I'll be discussing more tools to unlock your dreams and live a limitless life that you would truly love to live. I'm Susan Kathleen and this has been Awaken Your Mind Magic. <laughs>